there's a huge number of private hobbyists that have the exact same interest and drive as somebody like myself. Um, they're just smarter than I am. They go into the real world and get a job that actually pays them something. There are some great people out there that have these, and they have certainly made more than just your average contribution to science. The private sector is where I got my start, although I started as a zookeeper. Before that, my interest was in the private sector. Some of the most amazing discoveries in science, in herpetology specifically, have come from people in the private sector. They're very professional people. There's a lot of people um, in the private sector that I trust way more than, than people in, in professional zoos and facilities. The grandfather of uh, rattlesnake research, uh, Clauber, Lawrence Clauber, was in the private sector. You know, I certainly enjoy keeping the animals, but I also like to interface with the scientists a lot. And if I can contribute to, you know, the medical or scientific aspects of it, that's the icing on the cake, if I can do that. The private sector does a tremendous amount of work in research. The private sector does a tremendous amount of breeding we're now seeing a reproduction out of animals that, that we could barely even keep alive 30 years ago. My biggest focus working with the Gila monster is to understand their reproductive biology. This is where I keep all my monsters. Now in this room I have it controlled as far as temperature and humidity and light cycle to reproduce the environment that they're experiencing in their homes in Arizona. One of the things that I do is I have video cameras mounted in each of these breeders' cages so I can monitor their behavior. I've learned a lot about how this reproductive cycle progresses, how behavior relates to various stages in reproduction. So if that hobbyist is focused on learning things and documenting what they're finding, there's a huge potential to understand more about this misunderstood lizard. A constant topic in keeping venomous reptiles is whether it should be done in the private sector and whether it should be legal and or allowed at all. Things that make a, a, a hot keeper responsible are access to antivenom, which I'm fortunate to have. What makes a hot keeper a responsible keeper is someone who has a, a real and serious interest in the animals themselves. Of course there's such a thing as a responsible private keeper. But because this is up to the conscience of the individual, only they know who they are. I still believe 90% of the people I know who work with venomous snakes do it responsibly. But that 10% are, is what everybody hears about. If you're a stupid person and you're doing this for the wrong reasons, then you're more likely to end up you know, in an obituary column or in a news story. Every time you get on the internet and you do something stupid with an animal or you get bit by an animal, you're just giving them more fuel. But if you never put yourself in a position to get bit, you're not going to. Most people say it's not a matter of if, but when, that it is a matter of if. I have never been bitten by a venomous snake. I will not get bit. I will abide by all the rules. I don't free handle. I use tools. I observe safety protocols. And it's not because I'm arrogant and I think I'm so good that it's never going to happen because I don't depend on my reflexes or my knowledge of the animals. I depend on the things that I do and the tools that I use to keep them at arm's length. If we police ourselves, there's a better chance we'll get what we want. If we get policed by somebody else, we're not going to get what we want.